In this example, we've been asked to use the ratio test to determine the convergence of this infinite series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, n factorial times n factorial over 2n factorial. First thing to note here is that you cannot cancel factorials with other factorials unless it's exactly the same factorial. So there's, uh, we can't cancel an n factorial with anything on the bottom here. But the question says to use the ratio test. So to start the ratio test, we realize we're going to look at the ratio between the general term here, an, and an plus 1. So it's always a good idea to write them down first. an, just the general term, is whatever is to the right of the summation sign n factorial, n factorial over 2n factorial. We're going to look at the ratio between that and this an plus 1. So wherever I see an n, uh, an n in the general term, n plus 1, I make it n plus 1. So on the top line, n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial. In the bottom line, I'm replacing the n with n plus 1. They're both being multiplied by 2, and so it will be 2n plus 2, and that whole number, we're taking a factorial of that. So we need to look at the ratio between an plus 1 and an. Let's state the ratio test here that says L is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of an plus 1 divided by an. That's the ratio we're talking about in the ratio test. So we just substitute an plus 1 and an into our limit. We know that an plus 1 is a fraction divided by an, which is a fraction, so we'll take the, the top fraction, multiply it by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So that's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. We haven't done the limit yet, so we state the limit rule. Uh, an plus 1 is n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial, all divided by 2n plus 2 factorial, divided by an, which is this fraction, so we multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. So the 2n factorial comes up to the top, and the n factorial, n factorial, will be on the bottom. To take the limit as n approaches infinity of this large fraction, now we need to simplify. So now we're going to look at the common terms that are in n factorial and n plus 1 factorial. I'm going to use the fact that factorials can be reduced. So as an example, over here if we have 8 factorial, that's the same as saying 8 multiplied by 7 factorial. And then maybe this 7 factorial will cancel with something on the bottom. So I'm doing exactly the same with these terms n plus 1 factorial. I'm going to say that n plus 1 factorial is equal to the top term, which is n plus 1, multiplied by all the other terms, which are n factorial. And so if I use that rule in the substitution up here, we'll be able to cancel some things out. So let's have a look at doing that. The limit now will become... We haven't done the limit yet, so we still write down the limit rule. The first n plus 1 factorial, I'm writing as n plus 1 multiplied by n factorial. The second n plus 1 factorial, I'm writing as n plus 1 times n factorial. The 2n factorial, I'm going to cancel with some of the terms on the bottom line. Here I'm going to do the same process when I get to the bottom line. But still on the top line, the 2n in brackets factorial is still there. On the bottom line now, I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the n plus 1 factor factorials to the 2n plus 2 factorial. 2n plus 2 factorial, the first term is 2n plus 2. When we subtract 1 from that, the next term is 2n plus 1, and then the next term will be 2n, and then 2n minus 1, etc. So for me to cancel the 2n plus 2 factorial, or some of those terms with some of the 2n factorial terms, I need to take two terms off the top here. So in the same way we simplified the 8 factorial and the n plus 1 factorial over here, 2n plus 2 factorial 
can be written as 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. So that move again, 2n factorial times 2n plus 1 is 2n plus 1 factorial. All of that multiplied by 2n plus 2 is 2n plus 2 factorial. So the top two terms that are in the factorial can be written down separately. All these are multiplied. All the other terms are now 2n factorial. I did that so that I can cancel with the 2n factorial, which is already on the top line. That's that first factor on the bottom line. Also on the bottom line, we have n factorial times n factorial. Now we've got some common factors on the top and the bottom, and we can cancel out one act n factorial with an n factorial, an n factorial with an n factorial, and the 2n factorial with the 2n factorial. And that's good because now we don't have any factorials left over. Also, in this term here, I've got 2n plus 2, which is 2 outside of n plus 1. So I could cancel this n plus 1 with a 2n plus 2 on the bottom line, but I'd be left with a factor of 2. So we should simplify all of that, write out our limit again. It's the limit as n approaches infinity. On the top line, all I have is n plus 1. And on the bottom line now, all I have is 2 multiplied by 2n plus 1. No factorials left, so that makes everything a bit easier. I now think about doing the limit, so substituting in. Think about when n approaches infinity, the top line will approach infinity, the bottom line will approach infinity, and so we don't know what this is. We need to do some more work here. The usual thing when the limit is undetermined, like that, the top and bottom lines both tending towards infinity, I look for the highest power of n, divide top and bottom by the highest power of n. In this case, the highest power is just n. So I'm thinking to simplify this, I'm going to divide the top line by n, the bottom line by n as well. Simplifying the function, I still haven't done the limit, so I'm still writing down the limit as n approaches infinity. On the top line, both terms here divided by n gives me 1 plus 1 on n. I can bring the uh, 2 inside if I like, or I can leave it outside. Let's multiply it in. So 2 times 2n is 4n. Divided by n, I'll be left with 4. And the second term here, 2 times 1 is 2. Divided by n, I can write as 2 divided by n. That simplifies things a lot, because now, as I think as of n approaching infinity... 1 divided by n will approach 0. 2 divided by n will also approach 0. So as n gets uh, very large, this fraction 1 over n gets very small and will tend towards 0. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 on n is 0. The same for 2n is equal to 0. So now when I do the limit, I can see that the answer for that will just be a 1 on the top line and a 1 and a 4 on the bottom line. So my ratio test value for L, the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio an plus 1 over an, gives me 1 quarter. That, I note, is less than 1. And remembering for the ratio test, when the value of L is less than 1, the series converges. So... We have shown that by the ratio test, this series converges.